Hey friends, it's John here from Sunning Drive Studio. I hope you're all doing well. Let's have some fun today and do some experiments. You know, when you post a picture of your amplifier on social media, there's always some random guy who says, crank it up loud and it will really come to life, bro. Or something like, wait till you turn it up super loud and those tubes will really start to cook and the amp will sound much better. Let's just put that to the test today with three types of amplifiers. We've got a 20 watt Marshall, the SC20H, we've got a 50 watt Orange, the Rockerverb 50 Mark III, and the 100 watt Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier. And let's just play some riffs through these amplifiers, both at quiet and loud levels, and compare the tones and see which one sounds better. Do the amplifiers sound better when you crank them up really loud or do they sound better at quiet levels? I'm actually quite interested to hear the results myself, so this will be fun and interesting for sure. Now we're going to take a look at this purely from the tube amp perspective, so from what happens inside the amplifier itself. So basically how the tubes and all the components in the amplifiers react to the volume differences. Keep in mind that guitar cabinets and speakers play a much less drastic role in this because the frequency response of guitar speakers in general stays fairly consistent across the levels until it reaches a point where it starts to compress and distort, which usually is not a desirable effect. So basically the effect of speakers in this, so in terms of how the amp sounds in terms of loudness, is probably much more subtle than some of you might think. Now a big factor in this is how our ears perceive the difference in tone across the volume levels. Have you ever heard of the Fletcher-Munson curve or the Fletcher-Munson effect? Now those curves basically illustrate that we perceive sound differently at various volume levels. If you don't know what this is, I highly recommend doing some research on it. The Fletcher-Munson curves. So if you're in your room playing with your amplifier and the amp sounds very different at a quiet level versus a loud level, that probably has to do with this effect. And it basically has nothing to do with the amplifier or speaker itself. So yeah, that's a pretty interesting phenomenon in itself. Now I'm taking those aspects out of the equation completely so we can just hear how the amplifiers themselves react or respond to the volume differences. So let's get started with the Marshall JCM 800 Studio, the SC20H, 20 watt amplifier with two EL34s in the power section. And it's a low wattage amplifier, but it can get quite loud up until a certain point. And at that point, the amp doesn't get louder at all. The power tubes just start to compress and distort, basically. Now, this is a low wattage amplifier, of course, with 20 watts, but it is still pretty loud. Of course, it's not as loud as a 100 watt amplifier or a 50 watt amplifier, but it's still quite loud for such a compact little amplifier. Now the low level with this amplifier will be quite quiet, so kind of your bedroom volume, so to speak. And for the comparison for the loud levels, I'll crank up the volume quite a bit to around four or so, which is quite loud for this amplifier. The power tubes really start to compress and saturate at that point. And even if I crank the amplifier up louder than that point, the amp will not get louder in terms of volume it will just start to compress and saturate even more. So this is as loud as this amplifier will go, basically. Now for this video, the amplifiers will be fed through my RED7 amplification Amp Central Reactive Load and into Ohnhammer Cabinet IRs. This first amplifier will go through the large cabinet in the Ohnhammer Moabi pack on the low gain mic mix. And I'm using my Gibson Les Paul Standard 60s, by the way, with the Seymour Duncan JB in the bridge. Okay, let's check it out right now.
points. That was quite interesting. So with this particular amplifier, the difference between the volume levels is quite drastic. So the effect on the tone of the amplifier is quite drastic here. The EL34s really start to smoothen out the top end, so the amp definitely gets darker with the louder levels. There's more saturation and compression as well. I personally think that it's a little bit too dark with these settings, but this really does illustrate what starts to happen when you crank this amplifier up. For me personally, for my personal use, I like to set the volume a little bit lower at between 9 or 10 o'clock or so, which is at a point where the power tubes starts to work, but not as drastically as you heard in this comparison. This will basically leave the upper mids and the high end more intact. Now let's go louder with my orange Rockefeller 50 Mark III. This is a 50 watt amplifier, of course, and this also has two EL34s in the power section. I am expecting different results than with the Marshall because this is a more modern amplifier after all, and this amp also has more headroom. And modern amps tend to get the tone more from the preamp section than the power amp section in general, unless you push them really hard. So we'll see what happens. Again, we'll start at a very nice low bedroom level, and then I'll crank it up until it's pretty loud. I'm using my Gibson Les Paul Custom for this one, and another Ohnhammer Moabi cabinet, but this time from the extra large cabinet on the high gain mic mix. Okay, let's check it out. Again, interesting. This time the difference was definitely more subtle than with the Marshall. So this amp basically sounds great both at low levels as well as at very loud levels. The sound is very consistent from the low level until the loud level. So that's a good thing, especially if you like playing with this amplifier at lower levels. Now there was a subtle difference. The louder parts were slightly more compressed and a little bit more round overall. And it even sounded as if the low end was a bit more sort of pronounced at the louder levels, which was interesting. So now let's move on to an even louder amplifier, my Mesa Boogie 100 watt dual rectifier amp. And this one of course has four 6L6 tubes in the power section, so no EL34s this time. I'm very curious to see how this will go actually, because this is one of my favorite amplifiers as well. So same thing, we will start at a very low level with this amplifier, but do note that when you turn up the master volume control on this amplifier, there is a point where there's no sound and then all of a sudden the sound is there and that lowest level of sound isn't super quiet, so keep that in mind. And then we will crank it up quite a bit until it gets very loud. For this part, I'm using my ESP LTD Phoenix Black Metal with the Fishman Fluence Modern pickup in it. And for the Ohnhammer cab, this time I'm using one of the essential cabs, the OH Rect cabinet, the 412 Rect, which is a rectifier cabinet with a V30 in it. And I'll use the high gain mic mix once again. All right, here we go. <laughs>
Wow, again, that was quite interesting. And this time the results were quite similar to the results with the Marshall. The quiet parts were brighter and more sizzly and more open sounding, basically, more dynamic. And when I turned the amplifier up, the top end did get more smooth, so darker. And the sound also got more compressed and saturated. So especially the low end chuggy parts were more squashed than with the quiet levels. And again, for me personally, this is a bit too loud for my taste. I like the amplifier with a bit more of a quiet level, so turn down a little bit more so that the sound is a bit more open with more top end and that the low end chugs have a bit more room to breathe. Basically with more subtle compression and saturation, but just with a little touch of that. That's where my sweet spot is usually with my amplifiers. So what do you guys think? How did you prefer these amplifiers? Did you prefer them quiet or loud? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, I might do another one with different amplifiers or different types of amplifiers. Also let me know what you'd like to see in the comments down below. That's all for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and that you found it useful. If you haven't already, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below along with the notification bell as that really helps the channel out and it will help you to stay up to date on all my activities. You can also follow us on the Drive Studio on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, by the way. Thank you guys so much and I hope to see you soon. Cheers.